Though sail dates back more than 6,000 years and is arguably older than the wheel itself, March 2010 will be a significant milestone in its evolution and indeed in the history of transport as it's the point where the world's first commercial tribrid becomes available. The enabling technology comes originally from German electric outboard manufacturer Torquedo, but in being offered as an option by watercraft manufacturer Hobie, it will result in the world's first commercial tribrid. By adding electric power to its Adventure Island one-person sail yak, a new Tandem Mirage two-person sail yak, Hobie will be offering the first commercial watercraft powered by a combination of three viable energy sources, human power, sail power and electric power. Indeed, with perhaps the exception of Venturi's highly eccentric eclectic automobile, um, the, this is the first commercial tribid transportation device of any sort in history. The Hobie Evolve electric motor hits showroom floors next month and weighs just a tad over 8 kilos, complete with wires, throttle, cables, lithium manganese battery and a GPS, and it adds 8 hours of 2 mile per hour motive power to any kayak in the Hobie range. As it comes standard with two ingenious mounting kits, it can be used on the rudder of any Hobie kayak, and it can also be mounted in place of one of the Hobie's pedal mirage drives and paddled with a normal kayak paddle. It's the addition of this option on the Adventure Island one and two person sail yaks that completes the tribrid capability, and the end result is a remarkable waterborne device in both cases. Based on the Torquedo Ultralight 402 motor, the Hobie Evolve battery case has a built-in GPS, which means that you always know your exact real speed as it reads out on the display of the remote throttle. Cost 1900 US dollars, and it means that the entire range of Mirage pedal drive kayaks can become human electric hybrids, uh, and the Adventure Island and New Tandem Island become legitimate tribrids. If you're a technophile and you haven't seen Hobie's Mirage drive, you're in for a treat. It, is, uh, it offers a highly efficient way to propel a watercraft for very long distances. It's pedalled like a bicycle and the slot in drive produces motion in two penguin fin-like flippers underneath. Like many of our inventions these days, biomimicry played a role in the design of the Mirage drive. Hobie borrowed the fin ideas from nature after noting that university studies show that the oscillating fins of tuna and penguins are more efficient than propellers because they, make, they can make use of the vortices that are naturally shed from anything going through the water to up, offset the vortices that would normally be generated by fins. But the physics of the device are difficult for the eye to behold and it's an understatement to say they belie its efficiency because as I'm going to get to in a minute, it's almost as efficient as running. It's, it's almost as efficient as the human gait. If you go to the Hobie Cat site, you'll see there's a comparison test, a tug of war between the designer of the Mirage Drive and, and I have owned a, uh, an Adventure Island with a Mirage Drive in it for two and a half years since it came out. And after numerous comparisons, paddling one way and then the other over a set course, the, the Mirage Drive runs out to be, I would say, 20 to 30% more efficient than paddling. Um, and it's almost as efficient as running. Here's the maths the way I do it. The current world half marathon record is 58.33, set by Kenya's Samuel Wanjuru in, nine, in 2007 in uh, Holland, I think. Uh, adjust that same speed to cover an hour and you get 21.6 kilometres, or 21.6 kilometres an hour average, or 13.4 mile an hour average. A kayak with a Mirage drive with turbo fins, which are the next generation high performance upgraded version that costs more, uh, and an athlete pedaling would cover better than eight miles in an hour, maybe maybe even more than 10, significantly better than half, and approaching two thirds of the speed of an equivalently fit person. At far gentler inputs, I would say the Mirage would probably be more efficient comparatively as it can glide long distances with almost no input. Um, another advantage it has over a propeller driven system is that the Mirage drive fins feather into the flow when not pedalling and create very little drag, like you can just gently pedal and it goes quite long distances and by comparison a propeller 
creates significant drag when it's not spinning. The back and forth motion of the pedals provides a really long smooth stroke and that motion allows the pedals to be positioned much lower in the cockpit than a circular pedalling motion like in a bicycle. What's more, the Mirage Drive can be adjusted to suit any length of stroke desired and it can also be adjusted to accommodate different size human beings. Now, as I said, I've owned an Adventure Island with a pedal Mirage Drive for the last two and a half years and I can vouch that it does all of the things asked of it. Um, it's never been maintained in any way. It's continually abused on rocks and in shallow water and will happily do so for ridiculously long periods of time. It is far more reliable than a bicycle chain in far more hostile conditions and the fins fold up to next to the hull for beaching so you just put one foot forward and slide into the beach, the rocks, the, the grit, whatever. Um, and it, seems, it just seems impervious to neglect and punishment. There's never once fouled on anything and it's, it's as, as efficient a drive system as you can get in water. And with the two drives available in the tandem kayaks and now in the new tandem island, which also hit showrooms in March, there's suddenly a lot more horsepower available. Two fit pedalers should give the tandem island a speed of a fair bit more than 10 miles an hour, I would have thought. Um, now, I use my Adventure Island daily when I'm at home. Uh, it's basically a Hobie kayak with a Mirage pedal drive, uh, 57.5 square foot of sail, that's 5.34 square metres, on a 15 foot 2 inch carbon fibre mast. It has retractable ammers on each side. Um, you can take the ammers off, take the sail out, and it becomes a kayak again. Um, and I use it some days both ways. Uh, I use it almost every day and I can see why it's been embraced worldwide as the sort of the Swiss army knife of adventure transport because it does everything really really well. It's capable of hitting 10 miles an hour under sail, uh, it'll do a comfortable 5 mile an hour pedalling alone and offers an incredible hybrid human sail combination where the, the hybrid HPV sailing is enhanced by your ability to give it power. They fit so well together so that when you, you're uh, attempting to pick up a swell or and get a good ride off a swell or, or get the bow across the wind, you've got a burst of speed because you've got five mile an hour of leg power sitting below the sail at any time. And with two people, um, the prospect of two fit peddlers is incredibly enticing. It'd be so much fun to actually go out and get out in the bay and see how fast you could make one of these things go with two people. Human power and sail power fit incredibly well together that it's almost a different form of sailing. One that I could see as being an Olympic sport in its own right because it actually it includes the, the wiles and the skills of sailing and you need to be incredibly fit to do it well. Now the Tandem Island which is I think probably the showcase tribrid uh, device is now a much, much larger boat. They haven't just, you know, like they've made a, a purpose built item and it's something special. And because it's much bigger and more stable, it can carry a lot more sail. Um, the mast height has been increased to 18 foot, um, so the sail area has been increased to 90 square feet compared with the 57.5 square feet of the single seater. So it's effectively got. 56% more sail power and a human work walking can carry a large amount of gear maybe say 40 kilos at a pinch but you won't set any running records with that much weight on your back and an 80 kilo pilot in the Adventure Island can comfortably carry as much again if the island is packed with balance in mind that means that you can carry another 80 kilos now with the larger tandem island with two 80 kilo occupants you could carry another 112 kilos of weight and if one of your occupants was, um, you know, female maybe, or, or you were both uh, lightweight, um, whatever you take off in terms of if it was a 50 kilo and a 60 kilo person, well, then you're going to have another 50 kilos that you can carry with it. So it's, it's adventure transport. It's transport through the wilderness, and it's reliable transport through the wilderness that's going to get you there at 
probably 10 miles an hour or more if you want it to, but it's so quick in almost any circumstances that you're going to get an opportunity to see things close up and spend a fair bit more time than you would in any other circumstance. By intelligently combining the power of 16 foot of sail with human power and now with enough electric power to take you 16 miles in eight hours, uh, regardless of winds, rips, currents, anything, the tandem island with electric is a landmark watercraft, as is the Adventure Island, which is the same tribe of capabilities. It doesn't just add tribe with power to the island range, though, and that's what makes it such a big announcement. It takes all of those kayaks that are already out there in the Hobie name and adds hybrid power to them, meaning that the inflatable range now has an electric option, as does the fishing range, the hunting kayak, and all of the single and double mirage sit-on kayaks. And its stealth aspect, which enables you to get closer to nature than by any other means, will not be diminished in any way. Now, Hobie's Mirage Drive offers a remarkable synergy with both the electric drive and in the case of the island sail too. The, the, the three fit together so incredibly well. There's no flashing blades, there's no splashing, and if you cover up properly, no visible movement at all. So it's a perfect thing for getting close to nature. Um, there's a special hunting version which comes with camouflage covering and a camouflage spray cover. Um, to give you an idea of just how stealthy the Mirage Drive is, I actually, I, I didn't realise what I was doing at the time. There were a bunch of dolphins in the bay, I'd seen them out there and I, I'd been trying to catch up with them for a week or two and uh, I got out and I actually got amongst them. I actually got directly amongst them before suddenly they obviously realised that I was there. I was just pedalling with the Mirage Drive and suddenly they were gone. They just disappeared and I didn't see them again for about 10 minutes and they were about a kilometre away uh, when I saw them. So they'd sudden, I guess it looks like a, uh, with the fins and, and the flippers and things, it looks like a, a um, another fish from the bottom and they hadn't been paying all that attention. They were all fro frolicking. There was a baby amongst them, which is, I think, the reason that they freaked out so much. But I got amongst a set of dolphins who would probably be among the most acute hearing creatures on the planet um, using just the Mirage Drive. So that's an indication as to how much stealth is involved in this. I could see myself spending a lot of time in nature covered up and moving very slowly and not adding any hydrocarbons and not messing it up anyway, you will never get as close to nature as with one of these up a river or in a lake. And uh, I feel very privileged to have done it in the environment that I'm doing it in right now because I often see things that I, I know I would never have got to see if I didn't have that device to be able to move cleanly and safely amongst them. Uh, the accessories on this adventure transport machine completed even more. Um, getting continually hit by spray occasionally happens in a sit-on kayak and it can be deeply unpleasant. So they've created a clip-on spray guard which does the trick very nicely. Now the Hobie kayaks aren't amphibious but they're pretty close. From time to time you need to carry your kayak from one body to the next body of water or from the car to the water and sometimes it's not exactly a straightforward journey on flat trails with a concrete boat ramp. Each Hobie comes with a plug-in car. You simply lift up your kayak, slide in the frame that holds the wheels and, and your kayak has wheels. And once the wheels are locked in place with another ingenious locking method, one of many that Hobie uses, you're away. In closing, I guess the Adventure Island and the Tandem Island are mile munchers capable of taking you through hundreds, maybe thousands of miles of wilderness. If I were Hobie, I'd be running a race for single and two-man teams using Adventure Islands and Tandems over a very long distance to show people how you can cover such large distances with a device that sells for only a few thousand dollars. It's got more bang per buck than any other toy I've ever owned and I can hardly think of anything that comes even close that we've written about on Gizmag over eight years and 15,000 stories. And now there's a two-seater and I can see couples using it as holiday transport, 
it doesn't have to cost a lot of money to give you a fantastically good time. And there's something like the reason that the tandem has been um, demanded by enthusiasts worldwide for the last three years since they first got to see how good the Adventure Island was, was we've all been crying out the ability to share this with somebody. That It's so much fun that having two people do it would be a, a team-building exercise for two, a perfect thing for um, to do together with your partner or, or a friend on, uh, on a resort. Uh, I would imagine um, honeymoon resorts, it would, it's an ideal thing. There's some sort of metaphoric thing going on there. And um, anywhere there's a light breeze and friendly waters and nature to get close to, and an electric motor would help get the ine inevitable stragglers in on time at the end of the day. Uh, you can tell I'm sold on this. <laughs>